All right, it took us an extra 30 minutes to get started. Um, I remember when I was in um, film school, they said uh, three things for your first couple of projects, your first major project. Uh, one, don't do any major uh, you know, special effects. Um, don't work with animals and don't work with children. And uh, the, pretty much the biggest stunt of my life has been creating children that I'm now working with. And it took them some time to get their lives together. Uh, so I'm looking forward to this uh, very much. My name is Luther D. Isler, artistically known as the artist Anubis, and welcome to hashtag dad life dad chat. Those of you who've been following me on Facebook for a while may be familiar with hashtag dad life, where I get the pleasure of pontificating on my precious and precocious daughters, uh, Lexis and Ashlyn, lovingly known simply as Lexi and Lynn. So people usually say, oh, you guys should do a show or, or the girls deserve their own show. So this is kind of it. We're at a time where there's a lot going on and a lot to discuss. Um, so I would be remiss if I didn't spend any time discussing what's going on in our country right now, especially as we all are fighting so that the world reflects the idea that Black Lives Matter along with and equally to everyone else in the country. Um, in a sense, most sparked um, by the murder of 46 year old George Floyd. Now, it needs not to be uh, forgotten that George Floyd leaves behind a six year old daughter. And um, I saw a video clip of her uh, and pretty amazing. And you, you have to think as a father, um, you know, that might've been the greatest fear in that moment, you know, leaving his child um, like that. Uh, I recently wrote a piece um, kind of reflecting some thoughts I actually had recently. And it goes something like this. Yesterday, I passed a cop car and I began to rehearse my lines. If I were profiled, victimized and police brutalized and denied my civil and human rights, what I called my boss, state senator, or my chief of staff, cause she's quick to pick up. Or my big sister, she's well connected and surely she would pull up, but no. If I only had time for one phone call, I would call my children. I would tell them I love them. Tell them to tell their mother to call my mother. She would definitely think I was bugging, but if my flat line became a headline and my body bag became a hashtag, it all makes sense. And the last words that I would say is, it's just another Tuesday. Because at this point, that's what it feels like it is. So on this Sunday, I don't want to spend too much time um, on that. Because one of the things I like to say is while we are fighting for our black lives, it is important that we enjoy our black lives. And the best joy of my black life as a black father are my two, as I said before, precious and precocious uh, little black daughters. And so I would like to bring up them right now. So Lexi and Lynn, if you can hear me, uh, okay, great, you unmuted. And now you gotta press the, there we go, all right. I can't see you. Why, why can't see you? There we go. Hey, babies. Hey, Dad. Hi, Dad. Hi. Say hi to Facebook. Hi. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so real quick, how how are you guys feeling? Good. Great. Y'all look so pretty. <laughs> Thank you. Your hair looks nice. Who did your hair? Mommy. No, oh, great. Awesome. Are you guys twins? No. <laughs> we keep saying things together. No, we're not. 
Okay, now you're not. Cool. Um, so real quick, um, Lexi, what's on your mind? If that's on your mind, then that's fine. Later, what's on your mind? Um, just being here on okay. the Zoom. On the Zoom, on Facebook Live. Great. Um, so Lynn, I know that you said you wanted to talk about coronavirus. You know, so so Facebook, I I asked these daughters, I said, Hey, what do you guys want to talk about? And literally the first thing Lynn was like, Corona. And I'm like, that's that's starting heavy. Uh, but what what about it, baby girl? I think like during Corona, things a lot of things have been happening. People have been dying, especially from this Corona. And I just like a lot of things are getting ruined because of Corona. Like uh, me, and my me and my sister ourselves, some uh, event for a big event for us got ruined because of the Corona. So. All these people are like their jobs are closing, schools that have been closed, the shows have not been happening. So I'm, I just don't know. What What was the big event that got canceled? For us, we did dance. So we had a big show with our dance company in Atlanta. Okay, and it got canceled because of Corona. No, uh, are you still getting to do any dancing while you're um, at home? Yes. Yeah, Sam doing... and okay. Sam and um, Buddha, our dance teachers, they like when they see somebody dancing, they'll send it to all of the kids and push, and they'll like say like it's a challenge. And we'll have to copy the dance. And okay. push it our dance group's name. So then we, when we copy the dance, then we have to put it on Instagram and they will see it. Or TikTok. Or TikTok. If it's on TikTok. And they will see it. You guys uh, won a competition recently, right? Yes. Tell us about it. With Camille J, we did Temporary Love. And she wanted to work with us when the quarantine is over. Awesome. You want to show us some moves? Mm -hmm. Sure. Oh. 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 Tell me your little fanny pack, Lexi. So what? Tell me your fanny pack. Why are you tweaking at all? Sorry. All right. All right. Show me, show me, show me some of the moves. Five, six. Wait, I, I can't get count out. I can't count out. Five, six. I'm gonna count. You can count. We gotta right. count. Okay, you guys count. All right, count. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, one, two, one. <laughs> and that's all of the stuff. That's all of it. All right, you guys doing it light. You guys doing it light. So I guess people got to just find you on uh, the TikTok. Yeah. You. We weren't expecting to dance. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. But always ready. Always ready. If you're always ready, you never have to get ready. <laughs> Those are some new outfits. They look nice. Thank you, Daddy. Mind you, Daddy's the one who gave them to me. Well, yes, but they look really nice on you. Thank you. Great. Um, so speaking of new clothes, have you guys been uh y'all guys been outgrowing a lot of your clothes really quickly, haven't you? Yes, <laughs> a lot of a shoes. Lot. Especially me, because I'm growing. Growing. growing a lot now. You are? You want to tell us about that, Lexi? Uh, Yasu yeah, can talk about that. 
Lexi, move over a little bit more towards Lynn so you can be more in the camera. How? Uh, well, that's I'm growing a lot because I have a a kidney transplant with her father <laughs> and the father but, with the donor. But explain to us, like, what does the kidney transplant have to do with you growing? Um, what it has to do with me. Um, yeah, so you said you're going like now because of the kidney transplant. I don't know, like, for sure, but I think it's because, like, now the kidney helps me, like, be stronger and it helps me grow. So, that was the your biggest wish for uh, what you wanted after the kidney transplant, right? Yeah. And I and after that, I kind of like got upset a little because I was growing like a lot. Not I didn't want to be that tall, but hmm. so you wanted so your one wish was to get taller, and now you're too tall. Now you're complaining. <laughs> yes, yes. Sir. You know what? You know what's not fair. You know it's not fair. Why does your kidney work better for you? Why does my kidney work better for you than it works for me? I didn't get taller. <laughs> <laughs> can, can I can I can I have it back please? Just just a little bit. I want to see if it if it, it works for me now. No. If it didn't work before, why would it work now? Like, okay, like you know how if you're trying to open up a jar and you can't open it up and you ask me to open it and then I open it and I give it back to you and then you can open it. Yes. So maybe the same thing. Maybe Len, like maybe Lexi just had to like open the jar for me. Does that make sense? No? Yes. No, okay. Yes. Okay. Well, um, stay stay around. Um, Do we leave our camera on? Yes. Well, no, I'm gonna turn it off and control it. Um, but anything else? Tell me about your day. What did you guys do today? Today, we came from home. We went with grandma and we went to Riverbank. We were like running um, on the track. We were walking and we came back and daddy called. He said, where are you guys? And we were walking from Riverbank. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that so funny, Lexi? <laughs> Like how she just like brought that, brought up that. She, he said, how was the day? What did you do today? So that's what happened today. Well, we're not done yet. And then we came home, we washed our hands, and we had some difficulties coming on the Zoom. Some difficulties? We, you guys were a whole 30 minutes late. Sorry. We were coming from River Bank. Yeah, now, we discussed this. We internet on my phone. But we discussed, what, what was that, Lexi? What was that? I said it. No, no you wouldn't be so said? bold. Let the Facebook people hear you. What you got to say, Lexi? I am not the one who did not put it internet on my phone. A word? That's how you're going to be? <laughs> you're going to put me on blast on Facebook TV? <laughs> I see you. I see you. You over there. I just had to throw it out. Gum, huh? I said, sorry, I just had to throw it out there. You just had to put it out there? You have to. If you have to. Just I'm just gonna say, like, if your phone just stops working, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. So before I switch over. What is it that you most look forward to when we keep doing these uh, hashtag dad live dad chats? Um, I'm looking forward to No, we're going to keep doing this like every Sunday. 
but like I'm looking forward to like a lot of people watching this. I'm looking forward to like well, I know we're gonna do like new things and like new like we're gonna talk about different things like every like each day. So like um I'm looking forward to talk about different things. I agree with you. What um what type of things would you like to talk about like in the future? I don't know, like kids getting toys. What? I don't. Know. I don't. Oh, and speaking of Corona, just one more thing. All right. Like during Corona, a lot of people's birthday has been passing. People haven't been be a, be, being able to be doing anything because of Corona. So like, it's just ruining everything. That's what I'm. That's one of. The, that's an example another example of what i mean by ruining everything do you feel like your birthday was ruined no i had a fun birthday Zoom it was with pretty my good sister. but i wanted to do more like we were gonna go to disney world for my birthday but the world has disagreed <laughs> the world disagreed so yeah. tell us what did you do for your birthday we had birthday Zoom. Wait, wait, wait. So our dad came over to our house and we opened some of our mom's presents that she gave us. And then we went on the Zoom. <laughs> and then I, and then Lynn opened her present from dad. And then I opened my present from dad and actually cried because I didn't think I would get a, I was going to get the phone. Yes, yeah, why did you cry? Now, people have seen the video, if, uh, Facebook Live. If you have not seen the video, it is somewhere on my page. Go to my videos. I, I have the photo, the video. Lexi looked at the package, screamed, and then started crying. Lexi, why, did you, why were you crying? And why did you not think that I was going to, um, to get your phone? Didn't I tell you I was going to get the phone? Maybe she forgot. Um, one, I kind of forgot, two, because you said- Wait, Lexi, so Lexi, can you see yourself on the screen? Can you see how you're only halfway on the screen? And Lynn, you're in the middle of the screen? Then move over so your sister can get to the screen. But she keeps putting her whole butt on the chair. Yeah, well then move the chair, because you put your whole face in the screen. There we go. Good job, Max. Um, because you said I had to wear my watch like every day until my birthday. No. Oh, so you thought you thought that you didn't earn the phone, so you didn't think I was gonna still give it to you. Yes. Oh, okay. And well, he got two ukulele. Yes. Are you taking ukulele classes? Yes. <laughs> well, I'm supposed to take it three days a week. Um, I'm gonna take it when I get back home today. Um, and I'm going to take it. Two more days a week this week. Cause basically Good. So so maybe next week you play the ukulele for um for the show. Maybe this yeah. All right. All right, baby girls. So I'm gonna go talk to some dads now. So I'm gonna call you guys back later. So kind of maybe if you while you're listening, you think of some questions for the dads, um, then you can ask them. How does sound? Good. Well, we, know, questions, we just got to write it down. Well, you don't have to. It's too late to write it down. I mean, fine, whatever. You have a couple of minutes, okay? Um, so if you need to write it down, then write it down, okay? All right, love you guys. Love All right, you. don't hang up. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just making you invisible. So those are my daughters, Lexis and Ashlyn, Lexi and Lynn. Um, but that's only part of what Hashtag dad life dad chat is about. It's me as a dad chatting with my daughters, but I also want to take this time to chat with other dads. So I'm coming calling up uh first uh uh dope poet who I just met thanks to uh this whole quarantine thing. One of the things that's really dope is in the open mic um and artist world, we've kind of really connected and come together utilizing um Instagram and other social media a lot more. Um, so I was able to connect with his brother. He has a new daughter he'll talk about a little bit. 
And uh, I was like, I said to him, when um, when I start doing this project, I definitely want you to be a part of it. And he was like, I'm down. So calling up first up my man, Brandon Lee. And while he's going, Brandon, what's good, bro? What's going on, man? I had this on my calendar as Pacific Standard Time. So when the <laughs> whole thing went bad, I was like, oh, snap. It's a uh, yeah, whole East Coast vibe. <laughs> Yo, but it worked. It works out um, because, as you might have heard, we started late um, because I couldn't figure out how to help my daughters get on. Um, so it worked out. Um, I'm gonna put up my bro. I've known this guy for years now, um, and he just had his second child, a baby girl, this week. So help me welcome my man Sergio Jimenez. He's coming up. Hey, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? What's good, guys? How's it going? Um, I know you guys were all, you guys got to hear my my girls and their uh, shenanigans. Uh, I think probably the biggest thing was the fact that Lynn really wanted to talk about Corona a lot. Um, how, how, how are you guys doing during this quarantine? Anybody? How you doing, Sergio? How's it going, Brandon? Well, no, how's the quarantine treating you, man? Oh, it's going, it's going, it's all right, you know. Um, I found a way to work from home, so I'm all right. Um, uh, I, uh, I do poetry full time, so I was able to do writing workshops from home. Um, it, it worked out for me, really, because it went from um, trading in my time to do workshops, like going to visit schools, to just trading in um workshops so I would just like record a video and be able to like send it to like multiple schools for the students to do the workshop um I have a cleaning company on the side as well so of course I like had to stop that um and allow like um allow the employees to like stay home and stuff but now we're relaunching on June 15th so um with the slow quarantine lifting you know the employees were like we need some bread and so I was like all right let's start it back up so um, other than that, I mean, it's really, yeah, I had to adjust because I'm really used to going out and doing things, you know, working out, moving, moving around and working um, from different locations. So working from home, you know, it does take adjustment, but nonetheless, uh, I've grown accustomed to this already. So how about you, Brandon? Man, on my end, it has actually been like a real blessing in disguise. Uh, my daughter was born on February 29th. So leap year, baby. Um, nice. And uh, two weeks later, the basically the new whole world shut down, you know. Nice. Um, and so I've gotten like an extended paternity leave in which I've been able to just kind of be at home, um, be with my daughter, be with my wife, be able to be the father that I wanted to be. Um, and so that's really been beautiful. Um, you know, I'm still working from home, still able to pay my mortgage and everything. Um, so that's like a blessing because I know a lot of people ended up losing employment during the course of that time. Um, I did lose a significant chunk on my finances, though, um, because I was running, you know, workshops with kids and after school programs and uh, after school programs shut down and they weren't really willing to hold, do the whole video concept with the kids. Um, so that stuff but uh but nah man it's it's provided me far more blessings than worries because my whole worry was when my child was born that you know i was gonna have to leverage using all of my vacation time just to be able to go do like doctor's appointments the visits and all the stuff that i wanted to be a part of um and that i was gonna miss out on vital time with my daughter but um didn't have to do that ended up being able to be here for all that and more so it's been good for me no, I, I, I hear you on that, um, the blessing in terms of, you know, being able to be uh, more present with your kids, you know, um, and I don't live with my kids. And right now I'm in New Jersey. So usually I'm, I'm, I have them after school. Um, but the, during the first week when the school went out, since it was easy for me to work from home while their mother was still uh, commuting, uh, I just had them with me, which was actually great because I was more actual time spent. And since they're still doing homework remotely and all the school remotely, um, they're going to spend some time with me in New Jersey because I don't have to worry about making sure to get to school. They just stay here and 
still do their work. So yeah, I think it's been um, great for a lot of people. And I think it's great that we can kind of see that and catch that, you know, and not get stuck in the downsides of it and say, wow, you know what? There's some elements of life that we don't get to really enjoy as much um, regularly that we get to kind of really dive into right now. Sergio, I know that's really convenient for you right this minute. Well, I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's frustrating because at the end of the day, you know, summertime is coming. It's nice and hot. We want to be able to go outside, you know. I have I have moments where Logan is almost three now, right? So while Logan was growing up, if there's days where I'm just like, I got nothing to do. I want to do something. Um, one thing I love to do is explore the city with it. So I would take him to the Bronx Zoo. I would take him, you know, to go to the beach. I would take him anywhere, you know, just be like, hey, let's go. Let's go check out what's out there. And you can't do that right now. So sometimes I'm just frustrated because I'm like, I want to do something with you. And I'm limited, you know, to, you know, my options. Yeah. Well, one of the biggest things that I wanted to talk about today um, for the first hashtag dad life dad chat is really about becoming a dad, you know? Um, for me, that was 10 years ago. Uh, for Sergio, that was almost three years ago. Um, for Brandon, you're about like three months in. <laughs> but uh, um, what, I don't know, for you guys, what was it like, I guess, first, when you found out that you were going to be a father, and then, I guess, that moment when, the first time you actually hold your baby in your hand? You know, someone said to me, a mother once said to me that um, a mother becomes a mother the minute she's pregnant, but a father becomes a father when he gets to hold the baby or something like that, um, which is an interesting thing, um, which, I mean, I'm not saying I prescribe to that literally, but it is this idea that, you know, we don't get to actually hold our child until actually, you know, the child's born, whereas mothers are literally every single moment that they're, they're living is caring for the child. So, you know, those are two dynamic moments for us as men, you know, finding out you're going to be a dad and actually getting to, you know, actualize and, and, and see that child. So what, what were those moments like for you guys? I guess I'll chime in first, man. Um, so like my, my daughter was planned. Um, like my wife and I are like, you know, like we've kind of broke like a generational thing of, in my side of the family where people were having children before getting married and we wanted to make sure that that was like a part of like what we wanted to provide for our daughter and so um so yeah man like we were planning on trying to get pregnant around this time and when we found out that she was pregnant it was like a, a super joyous moment i cried she cried it was it was beautiful man and to be honest as time continued to move forward i got more and more nervous and it's not for the typical reasons that people get nervous. I wasn't scared about being a dad. Um, I was actually just scared about getting old. Mm. Um, this existential uh, crisis of like running out of time. Cause you know, like in neighborhoods like mine where I grew up being 25 meant that you could be an OG to a lot of people. Cause a lot of folks didn't make it past, you know, 25, 30 years old, unfortunately due to, you know, gang violence and you know, police brutality and all the other things that pop off in our neighborhood. Um, and so to be 28 felt as if like I was on borrowed time and I questioned, I was like, yo, did I do all the things that I wanted to do before my baby got here? Because as soon as she's here, life changes and yeah. there's no going back. And there's a constant, she's going to be a constant reminder that I'm getting older day by day. Um, and so I had to wrestle with that. Um, and then when she came into this world, um, that became even more real for like probably like two seconds and then I held her and I was like yo this is the only thing that I like ever wanted to do you know um growing up without a father I always wanted to be the best father I could be um for my children and so like it was it was an answered prayer to be honest with you what about you bro Serge um, yeah, you yeah, hear the little one crying in the back right now. She's one week old. She's crying with her mommy. Um, when I had Logan three years ago, I was, I was, I was 20 years old. I dropped out of college to do poetry full time. I just moved out of my mom's place for the first time. So I was just like on this, like living it up kind of thing. I don't know, going to parties, you know, 
and being reckless. And so when I found I wasn't a very responsible adult when I found out that um, I was going to have a baby. So, but it was a quick adjustment. You know, it was definitely a huge shift. I would say the first one was difficult because you literally have to change your life routine and everything, you know? Um, so I remember when I held Logan, when he came out though, um, I had the mask on um, during like the OR and um, my boogers kept like running. So the nurse handed me Logan and I was holding him and I was like, all right, take it back. She was like, you don't want to hold your baby? I was like, no, it's my boogers. <laughs> um, so this time, a week ago, I had the mask on and I made sure I put extra tissue in there because I didn't want that to happen again. Um, and I was able to really hold her. Um, but yeah, I think the first time you have a child, it's, it, was, it was definitely a shift for me. I really had to adjust my life. But the second time, it's like, hey, welcome to the club. Like, you know, we already got the engine going. So just hop right on, you know. I mentioned on Facebook, but I'll say here, like, it's like you're playing one of those cooking games and you just buy another grill. Now you're just, you know, flipping burgers on two grills, you know, so um, it is, you know, it's been a week that I've had two children and it's definitely, I still have to adjust because now it's two children that I have to bathe, two children I have to make sure eat, two children I have to make sure I have clothes, you know. So there was a point, I think it was yesterday or two days ago where Logan's just watching TV and I'm like, Logan, you hungry? It's two o'clock. Like it was lunchtime. And I was like, I almost slipped my mind, you know? So um, that's one thing I have to adjust on. It's just making sure both of them got what they need. She's easy right now. because She's weak. She just sleeps a lot. You know, mommy does the feeding and then change in diapers. So it's easy right now. I'm really looking forward to the teenage or like the you know more older days. I think this is easier though. Like when they're kids like this is easy. It's the simple steps, but once they start asking those complicated questions, like in your dad life uh, uh, posts, you know, and like getting to explore their mind and becoming individuals with their personality. Like I'm really looking forward to that part as well. Um, Logan's becoming a great big brother though from the start, you know, um, of course, Deja and I, we read on like books and watch videos on like how to, how to deal with the, you know, uh, the parenting stuff and in ways that we can. So her therapist actually mentioned that Logan should have little tasks to help us out, you know? So we'll be like, can you throw this diaper out? And he'll be like, can I hold my baby? And he'll lay down and we'll put her, like Michelle on top of him, you know? So he loves it. We, they would they went to the store, I think yesterday, went to the store together and he's like, um, can I go home to my baby? And like, she's like, all right, you know? So I'm glad he's adjusting. I was concerned with him being jealous of like the, the newborn coming in, but it seems like he enjoys her as well. Yeah. Uh... It's a little, a little farther along for me, but um, I, when I first found out I was going to be a father, I did not respond particularly well. Um, I had just gotten married and I had a plan, right? I was going to be married for a year and then we would have a kids, right? Um, I was married for a month and then we found out we we're expecting a kid. So <laughs> my plan was jacked up and, and I'm a bit of a control freak. So um, uh my initial response is 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 one that if uh, uh, when my children's mother is mad at me, she'll bring up um, and never let me live down. But very, very, very quickly, once I got over that initial shock, um, everything else was a complete different gear change for me. And like, it was just um, literally the most important thing. I was working full time as a, um, as a, um, just a, a photographer. Um, and I was like, all right, that is inconsistent money. Uh, as a videographer, I just video. And I'm like, that's inconsistent money. I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a drop that. And I started working at Target, you know, like I was like, you know what? Again, not in my plan, but it is more important for me to make sure that this child has whatever consistency they need, then I'm gonna just, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna work at Target. Um, and I would do everything. I would be at all of the appointments, and I honestly found it really hard to be a engaged, soon to be black father. I did not find that the system of in the hospitals or anything was um, welcoming or designed for my existence. Um, I would be in the waiting rooms. Um, we were married, but they would call uh, my ex-wife by her maiden name, would piss me off. I was like, if my child does not have my name on it, I'm going to blow up the building. 
I would, but I had a I had a community of other fathers, other black fathers, including my own, and I would just text them. I was being the, the waiting room, uh, texting them, and my dad said something to me that was phenomenal, and it kind of like put things perspective. And he said, you know, the world is not used to the type of dad you want to be. So it didn't exist, you know. Um, my dad was probably more active than his father, and his father probably more active, but no one was as active as I wanted to be. So it was not a thing that we were used to. Uh, I will say this, when we had to see some specialists who were black doctors, they actually spoke to me. Like everyone else would act like I was in the room, but they actually spoke to me. And I thought that that was um, significant. And then when my daughter, my first daughter was actually born, um, yeah, literally, um, you know, there's a scene in a, in a, in a I think, I forget, the, I forget the line, but I think it's Roots. Like here's the most important thing uh, to me, um, which is true. And you know, and, but to jump to two years later when uh, we respected my second daughter, I was panicked um, because I was like, I just got used to this, right? This all my love, all my attention, all my energy, yeah. and now, and my biggest fear was now I had to divide it, right? Now I have to take from one to the other. But I'll never forget the moment I held my second daughter. And it was like the, the scene in The Grinch where it's like his heart grew three sizes that day. Literally, yeah, it's like I did not have to divide my time or attention or love. It doubled. And literally the idea that time increased doesn't make sense in the cognitive sense, right? But it does. I have more time somehow. Um, so, yeah, it's, 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 it's amazing. And the other thing is we don't... We don't hear about us. We hear so much about the dads that don't exist, but here we are. And I found as B, when I became a dad that they're always there, right? There's so many of us black and brown fathers who are actually uh, present. It may not be the same numbers, but you see a guy all the time at the school, you know what I'm saying? As active as I wanted to be, I was not the most active dad in, in the girls' schools. So I think it's really great when we are uh, visible to each other. And, and kind of be, you know, show us to lean on and um, kind of examples, I guess, you know. Yeah, I'll touch on a few things. I remember my very first job ever uh, was right after high school. It was McDonald's. And when I stopped that job, I was like, I'm never going back to that ever <laughs> again. Um, but yeah, once I found out Logan was coming three years ago, I got an overnight job at McDonald's just to make sure I had extra money. And I was like, I'll back at McDonald's where I said I wouldn't be. Um, it's interesting. Deja says I'm more verbally um, affectionate with uh, Michelle mm. than I was with Logan. I'm not sure why, or but I was scared as well when I found out a second one was coming. And I think it's because the first child was like a huge adjustment. I thought I had to do all that again. Mm. Like all those emotions, all those. I was like, I can't, I don't know. If I'm ready to do that twice. Right. But when Michelle came, what I realized was, no, like there's not much adjusting to do because I'm already a parent. Mm. It's just like welcome to the family kind of thing. And so it was like, a it was a small adjustment. You know, it wasn't as much as I, I was like, man, I can't play video games no more because I'm going to have two kids and I'm going to have to, you know, and I was like, no, we got, you know, especially when you have a partnership is great. That's one thing, you know, that we can definitely speak on too, you know, from uh, doing it. There was a time when Deja and I wasn't together. Doing it alone was definitely like, stressful. And then being together and doing it together is much easier. It's simple. And it's like, okay, we, you know, we got each other to lean on in a sense, you know, especially living together. So that's definitely a balance as well. Yeah, but you, you hit a good point. And I want to uh, throw this to Brandon in a second. But, um, you know, Brandon, uh, you're happily married. It's awesome. Sergio, you're engaged, which is awesome. Um, I'm formally married. Uh, but one of the things, I mean, in, in, in my example, we, we've always said, no matter how we were with each other, we've been great uh, parents. So we're doing great partnership, you know? Uh, so I think the three, of, the, the three of us all have a good example of how important that partnership is. You know, last week, um, me and the, uh, my children's mother, and I, and I just, I'll clarify, I would say my children's mother, because one of the things we said was we're not calling each other baby mamas, we're not baby daddies. The connotation of that is not what it is, right? We're co-parents. Um, so 
you know, it's a, it's a respectability uh, type situation. But yeah, but you know, we were out and we'll talk about how the girls are growing. Um, you know, what do they need? And we just have, you know, and that's, so the girls are always covered. They have new clothes. First time I'm buying the clothes, usually their mom buys the clothes, but she said, hey, they need clothes. I'm like, all right, cool, I got you. And cause that communication. Um, Brandon, uh, you speak a little bit more on, on how important that partnership is? Yeah, no, nah, sorry. I'm just trying to get my screen adjusted. Mm -hmm. um, but now the partnership is is essential, man. Um, like, uh, when can y'all hear me? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, I think I think back to like about two hours ago, <laughs> how like my my wife took the baby and was able to like comfort her and put her to sleep just so easily. Um, and how like the roles were so different just like two months ago and how like my wife was like, like stressed out about trying to help get the baby to sleep and everything else that was going on, you know, like fussy one month olds who are going through the growing phase or, you know, colicky don't want to eat from the boob and want a bottle or whatever the heck is going on in the moment um, and how they shift day to day and you know, like despite the fact that I'm working from home, I still work right. and it shifts my focus away from giving complete attention to my daughter. And so like, I'll even miss some of like the subtle shifts within like the course of a week of things that she's now adapting to and doing differently. You know, like the same sound that I used last week to put her to sleep doesn't necessarily work this week no more. And now my wife's updating me like, oh yeah, no, no, no. She likes the vacuum sound now. And it's like, oh, okay. And so like that communication between me and my wife is, is so is so necessary. And then also like the reprieve, like my like we're exclusively breastfeeding. Um, mm. And so with that, like that could be really taxing on my wife and her sleep schedule. But we, we make sure that she pumps and that there's milk for me to be able to feed the baby. And so usually every morning between 5.30 and 6, I wake up and I take the kiddo until around like 9, 9.30, try and get my wife a, like a good three hours sleep in a row without having to wake up and feed the kid every two hours. And now we're getting into the phase where the baby can sleep up to like five hours at a time, which is great. Um, but like the fact that my wife was able to get that type of support, she like loved and appreciated. Um, and the fact that like, especially during like these high racial tension times. Mm -hmm. like, I know I have a partner who I can leave my, I have a wife who I can leave my baby with while I go out and go do this necessary work on the streets to ensure that my people are safe, ensure that we're feeling heard. Um, like I drove three hours away from home to go help lead a protest. Mm -hmm. I was gone for a full day yesterday, came back and it was just like clockwork. Um, I was fatigued, I was tired, she was fatigued, she was tired. And we both put ourselves aside for the second of turn. The baby went good. And as soon as that baby went to sleep, it was like harmonious how both of our heads hit the pillow at the same time and passed out. So. Nice. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that. I would love to touch on that. Um, Cause I got a newborn now. And that was one of my like concerns when they were preparing us for delivery. I was like in a room by myself and I was giving me my, myself the pep talk because what happens behind the curtains is what not a lot of people notice. Like a lot of the weight is on us for like the first two months while mommy is healing, you know? So it's like, we're coming home to not only like, I, I told her like, let me sleep on the side where the baby is at, where the bassinet is at so that the baby wakes up, I'm the one getting up and you can rest, you know, cause she's still healing. And so I got to make sure the room, the house is clean. Plus I got the little one running around, you know? So I'm trying to make sure that she's okay, that the babies and the kids are okay, that the house is clean, that the food is ready. And, you know, and I know it's temporary, but I, I had to prep myself like, all right, it's dad time for the next two, three months. Like, here we go. Once this baby's out, we're out, you know, and like, it was day one, the baby was 24 hours um, old. And I was like, this is a lot. And I was like, <laughs> my sleep deprivation started already like you know and yeah, that's something i had to like pre-game and talk myself to uh, i i wanted to get to something that brandon said but uh but off of that uh what you just brought up sergio i i will never forget my first night with the baby in the house uh with with alexis um 
my firstborn. So, you know, mom's at, at in the hospital with baby for about three days. So I'm prepping the room, I'm prepping everything. Great. They come home, I'm asleep, we're both asleep, and I hear a baby crying. First night with a baby in the house. And I woke up, asked, I said, yo, someone's baby's crying. She's like, that's your baby. I was like, wow, that's crazy. <laughs> but after that, um, you know, I would just keep her up. It would be me and her at night um, watching the boondocks on um, Adult Swim. Um, that's, that's, that was my, my baby's first couple of weeks watching the boondocks. Um, and we would just be up all night, you know, and, and I have night shift because I was working at night. So I was, you know, or I would work during the day and then have my nights, whichever, depending what day. And then um, the second story was that when, um, my second child was born, mommy didn't have the same amount of time for the first. So now first is upset with mommy. Next, he loved Lynn, but now she's mad with mommy because now mommy's not giving all the attention. So we had a lot of, of daddy-daughter time um, while, you know, one, one, one parent was with one child, one parent was with the other, so that everyone kind of all got the attention until we kind of like, all right, we're normalized. We can bring everything together. Um, Brandon, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you felt this as well, but I was joking with Dej about this. It's like now there is like so much love in the house. Mm. Like if I'm not holding Michelle, I'm going to go get some love from Logan. And if, mm -hmm. not, like, if Logan's sleeping, I'm going to go get love from Deja. Like there's so much like love in the house. And that's interesting because as individuals, as humans, that's something that we some that some some humans you know ex, like try chasing love or trying to find love throughout their whole entire life you know and to be in a house full of love where love is in every direction I can just like go and uh, hug somebody hold somebody and like everything everyone's loving up on each other it's um it's a really interesting foundation to be a part of it is and I remember um people used to always and they well they don't now as much because I've just so many times. But people always ask, like, oh, who's your favorite? Which, obviously, I'm closer with one than the other, but it's not really a favorite thing in the way that people think about it. But I always answer it like this. And I say this. My favorite is the one I'm holding, but I'm thinking about the other one. So it's literally, for me, it's a constant, like, oh, I have this one. Where's the other one? Where's the other one? So it's always, <laughs> like, the, the best moments for me is, like, the group hugs, right? Because now I have everything. Because it's literally, if I don't have one, I'm missing it, you know? Um, you're right. Yeah, you're right about that growing heart feeling. Like it's indescribable until you feel it. Until you really feel like I can have a bigger heart if I have more people to love. It's, it's amazing. Yes. Now on time, I just want to. I, I want to move to to something else, and I don't. I did not plan on discussing this, um, but it occurred to me that uh, we need to take a moment to. Um, and Brandon, you mentioned you know just in terms of. Uh, the fighting for racial justice in the community right now. And um, and it's, it's one of the things um, I think about is, you know, George Floyd left behind a six-year-old daughter, um, Gianna. And um, and, and I, a poem that I read in the beginning of this, and Brandon, you probably saw it on my page, um, I literally was thinking about, you know, if that was me, um, what... What I do, I, and I was really, and I and I hated it, but I really yeah. thought like, who would I call? You know, I need to make sure it's publicized. I work for a state center. I need to make sure someone gets justice. And I was like, honestly, if I had the time to really plan it, my first, my only call would be to my my kids. And I'm like, what? How do we feel as Black and Brown fathers of Black and Brown children um, about you know just the, the state of this this world racially um, that we're 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 bringing them into and we're we're preparing them for. Um, and hoping that we change for them. I got an interesting take on that. And also, I mean, just to comment on George Floyd's daughter, man, like that video of like, daddy changed the world. Like that yeah. like broke me, you know what I mean? Like, and it's a part of a poem I'm writing now, but like the idea that like black men change the world postpartum or like, mm -hmm. uh, like after death, you know? Yeah. Um, and it's, it's just really, really sad. Um, but no, man, I'm, I'm actually, I'm in an interracial marriage. Um, my, my wife is white. And so um, it's interesting because at home, my daughter will be mixed. To the world, she will be black. Um, and so like fully understanding that reality on my end, because like 
I know the full I know the full scope and spectrum of what that entails. Um, you know, the reason why I go out and protest and go fight is because I want my daughter to not have to be hardened by the world in the same way that I was. Mm. You know, like I remember the talks about like, yo, Brandon, um, if you go riding your bike too far into that other neighborhood, you know, they might call the police on you um, type of a thing. And I don't want my daughter to have to have those same conversations. Um, and if it's not her, then I don't want my grandchildren to have to have those same conversations. Um, and I remember a, poem, uh, a very poignant conversation I had with my father-in-law about like, yo, like you ready to have a black granddaughter? And he looked at me and he was like, what do you mean? And I was like, she's, she's gonna be black. He's like, she's mixed. And I was like, yeah, to us. I'm like, but I'm like the moment, you know, I'm like to the rest of the world, she'll be, she'll be just another black girl. And like, he didn't really respond. And like, I saw him mulling it over in his head for like 15, 20 minutes. And then he came back to me. He was like, you really don't think like people are gonna notice that like, you know, like she's mixed. And I, I was like, that's not that I don't think people won't notice, you know, they'll notice her lighter skin. They just won't care. Mm. <laughs> like it won't matter. Um, it don't matter if you're the light skinned black girl or the dark skinned black girl or light skinned black boy or the dark skinned black boy, you know, you can still end up a hashtag at any moment. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, uh, I remember I wrote a poem about this. I was in the elevator and uh, a father walked in with his five year old and he's just asking about like school. This was about a year ago. He's like, oh, um, yeah, I finished school. And the five year old's like, yeah. He's like, oh, you got homework to do? He's like, yeah. You know, and he's so like enthusiastic. And I'm just thinking about Logan. I was like, ah, oh, Logan's going to be five one day, you know? And, you know, I'm just talking to this father in the elevator. So I asked him, like, you know, how old is he? He's like, five. And I was like, oh, wow. And he was, I asked him, like, and then we just started talking. At one point, I was like, yeah, man, you know, I'm scared because at one point, you got to worry about. You know, right now it's easy. You just like what what clothes you're gonna wear and what food you're gonna eat. But now, you know, eventually you're gonna have problems like relationships and school stress and bullying. And so I told him like, yeah, I'm scared. And he said, me too. But like when we looked at each other, and he said, me too. I know he meant I'm scared in a different way, and that became a rock in my throat because I felt that with him. Like, oh, you're not talking about bullying in school or um, you know, uh, relationship problems. You're talking about the world we live in. And like, we were just silent for the rest of the ride after that in the elevator. It's like, wow, like it's intense. Um, and, you know, I, I think about it every day. Uh, one thing I'm glad is that I'm happy we're not alone in this world. You know, there are other people who had to deal with this. And, you know, so I look for examples. One of the best examples thus far that I've found um, is I was watching Raising Dion. And there was a moment in Raising Dion where she had to have the conversation with her son. And I feel like, like, I need to watch that again and write it word verbatim because, like, it was the best way that she was able to communicate to her son. You know, the writers did a great job um, writing that part. So I always look for other examples as well. It's like, what's the best way to do it? Sesame Street actually made a short video about like discussing protests as well. So I try to find examples. I know that I'm not alone in this world. There's resources out there to help us out with that, you know? Yeah, I, um, you know, I, I come from a family who like my, my great grandmother um, was part of uh, fighting for like the right to vote in North Carolina. Um, and so I kind of have a, a history with like civil rights stuff and my mentors uh, were Black Panthers. So, so my daughters, uh, when they were as early as three, I would teach them like the song um, Strange Fruit and had this conversation about like, this is what used to happen. Um, and some people uh, who look like this may do us in this way. Now it's not all people, um, but here, here's just what realities are. Um, you know, as an artist, I always use a lot of my platform to talk about, you know, like, uh, you know, the killing of, of young black men and, and, and women. Um, so they kind of grew up around that, that energy, but also, but my, my youngest, Lynn, you know, she understood that this was, this is a behavior she's hearing about, 
but I also, you know, my dad also has these other white friends who are not what he's talking about. So clearly there's um, a, a, a difference. So she, this one, I wrote about this, um, this one day I was walking and Lynn, knowing how I am, right? Every time she saw a cop, she would say hi and wave and look at me and say hi and look at me. And she's like, I like cops. And I'm like, okay. And cause I knew she was trying to get me. Like she knows the type of conversations I've, I've, I've had with her. But I was like, I'm not going to say anything because those should be your heroes, right? In in principle. Um, and I would ha and I wrote a, a poem about asking the question, at what point do I break that for her, right? At, if I, I have educated her enough for there not to be a shock to her system. Um, but at what point do I really be like, listen, um, and this situation kind of created the, the situation and took it out of my hands. Um, two days ago, I was with them in a, a grocery store and a man walked up and she jumped to the other side of me. And I looked, and I'm, I mean, I'm like, okay, who just scared my daughter like this, right? And I looked and I was like, I right, never seen him before. He didn't like, seem like he was even paying anyone any mind. And it was this janitor and, you know, he had like this big janitor belt or whatever, blue um, janitor uniform. And um, my daughter said, oh, I thought that was a cop. And I'm like, wow, my daughter has gone from high police officers to I'm a scared of this janitor because I thought that it was a, a, a cop. Um, and, and, it, and, and I do, I, I, there was no point of, I told you so there for me. It's, 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 it has happened, right? I tried my best, uh, but the world took a slight bit of, of, of hope. Um, that said, one of the things that I, I, I do is, you know, educate, but also make sure that we create enough um, good stuff that this, that, that our life does not, my children's lives does not become so weighted by the negative uh, that there's not enough positive to uplift them. So she's great now. She's on the show. We'll talk a little bit more about it later. But it's like, um, you know, it's as much as we can do. You know, sometimes it's going to be caught a little off guard when stuff just gets heavy. And as they grow and get to start to not just understand that this is a story that Dad told me, but this is the reality that I'm seeing. Um, and that's, you know, it's hard. I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time on that. But I, I did think, and I, and I appreciate you guys for, for your thoughts and sharing, because I, I think it's important that um, that we do kind of talk about that. And, and one is, you know, we, we're not alone um, in that. Um, and like you said, uh, Sergio, you know, there's, there's resources and there's people and, and conversations to be had about what to do. Um, yeah. And it's not even, not even on, on top of, to even expand on it, on top of having Black children, we have Black daughters, you know? And yes. In our society, black women are the ones that um, have the most oppression and deal with the most uh, systematic um, issues and obstacles uh, put from them, for from sexism to racism. You know, so I didn't think about that until after I was having a daughter. I was like, wow, you know. And I like what you said, though. You know, you just set up, you, you allow them to live life, you guide them, set up all the positivity, and you know, you deal with the obstacles when they come. You don't want, you know, them to be revolved around fear, uh, and you know, having to. We we just hope that life is good to them and prepare them as much as we can. Yeah, but on that note, on black daughters, I want to bring back my black daughters, and I want to talk about something that is particularly interesting. I think you guys have not. Um, yet experienced what I'm going to talk about, I don't think, to my understanding. Um, well, actually, Sergio, in a way, you actually did, and I'm going to get to it in a second. Let me, let me bring them back on. I got the sound on, is the, is the video on. There we go. Why it take so long for your video to come up, Lexington? I don't know. We we'll talk talk you talk to you like this. We can't see you. We will talk to you without seeing you. Did you guys do something? Because we want to see your, your pretty faces. There we go. There we go. All right. So this is what I want to talk about now. So you guys have 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 daughters. Although this actually may apply to your 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 son as well, Sergio. And actually, it does. Uh, hair, right? 
hair, right? So th- I have three hairstyles that I can do. You know, I have daughters, and I oh, have three hairstyles. Three. Only three. What's my three hairstyles, girls? Pull back on the tail. What? I could do. Now, let me tell you, I was so proud of myself when I could do the ponytail. It is not an easy thing to do. It looks yeah. easy when girls do it. Sergio, you had long hair, you had practice, okay? But no, back ponytail took effort. All right, what's the other one? Afro. Afro. Afro is my go-to. It's the easiest thing I could do. Find a pick, pick it out. All right, and what's the other one? Do you remember, I, I, I took the name from a video from another little girl. I used to call it the sugar bush. Oh, yeah, oh, and you gave me that before. Yeah. So describe, describe what the sugar bush is. It's like, it's like an afro. afro. Yeah. But like, like out and like out, like really, like really out. And out, <laughs> and out. I don't like how you guys are describing it. It sounds like a mess. <laughs> well, it's out. <laughs> It was like you like, like this. It's like ah, it's like out, like out. All right. So for everyone else, let me explain. Okay, it's it's, it's like it's it's like the it's like the the natural loose curly flowy oh. look. So like how the back of your hair is, if it was all that, then that would be what I call the sugar bush. It's 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 kind of part afro, part water part whatever hair product their mother leaves around that you think is what they're supposed to use, that's 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 what it is. So so um Lexi Lynn, so as you heard, Brandon, he has a, a daughter who is like what three months old? Three months old. Three months old. And Sergio has a daughter that is like three days old. Um do you have tips for them about doing their daughter's hair? Yes. Don't like it cannot be crazy. <laughs> Let me take notes. Okay. Um, I know like since like I know my father, he's aggressive. <laughs> Does so, daddy know how to break? No. Just not at all. <laughs> like since he's like aggressive, all I'm gonna say is like not don't be like too hard your head is really gonna hurt your scalp. Especially Lexi's like, a, a little tender headed. Lynn, Lynn isn't tender headed. Lexi's tender headed. She's you putting on me. No, Lexi's tender headed. You can't do anything with Lexi's hair without her uh, uh, having a fit. And if you like do two ponytails, Alexis, for Alexis in the middle, like there, it hurts like if you touch it. And my mom would have to loosen it. Now, Sergio, your son has, has long hair. I do. You know more hairstyles than I do. I had long hair, so I used to always do the ponytail myself. Um, the thing is, he's at, he hates his hair being touched. So when it's after bath time and I have to detangle it, I have a lot more patience than his mommy. So I don't mind detangling it and then she'll braid it. Um, but now having a daughter as well, I was like, Deja, I think I'm going to have to take like some kind of braiding lessons or something because that's going to be two heads of hair that we're going to have to you know, do. Um, one major thing I'm dealing with, even being Latino as well, is you know the land community um, just not calling his hair messy? You know sometimes I like the you call it a, a what bush? <laughs> sugar bush, sugar bush. A sugar bush. I'm always with the sugar bush. It doesn't last as long. Like I have to detangle it sooner, but I love how it looks. You know, and sometimes you know I got my mom or other people saying like, oh, this hair looks messy, and I was like, no, it looks free actually. I love how it yeah. looks. You know. Um, he hates, but he'll he will cry a storm while I'm detangling. I have to have my AirPods on and just do something, listen to music while I'm detangling it. I do want to learn how to braid just to help uh, mom me out with that. Um, but it's either if it's just me, it's either ponytail or afro. Like that's it. Um, mommy loves to do the braids, so she'll do like four or just two sometimes, and you know that's that. My mom Brandon, you been? What you say? I said, my mom does two braids too. Mm-hmm. Brandon, you given any thought to preparing for doing your daughter's hair? Yeah, actually, man, it's it's interesting because I don't know what kind of hair my daughter gonna have. Like, I don't mm-hmm. know if she's gonna have like my hair or if she's gonna have like her mom's hair. Because if it's her mom's hair, it's just kind of like loose curls, like 
real silky it just like kind of goes down or if it's mine um where like it grows to a certain height and then just stops growing you know what i mean um but i i'm going to this place called natural dew when mm -hmm. she turns like eight months and i'm just going to be taking classes from them because like they are like a all natural hairdo place where like they use no chemicals no like unnatural products and like they'll give lessons and classes to anybody who wants to learn how to be able to like do braids um do different types of hairstyles and stuff like that um learn how to like do the whole parting into the hair so that way like you know how to like get equal boxes or whatever the frick i didn't even know you had to do boxes <laughs> when you're braiding hair so i was like okay i just get the fade and then i'm done <laughs> so and, and it might become a mix i remember logan had patches of hair like mine and then like most of it was like his mom's but if i compare my like texture to his mom's he's really in the middle for both of us man so question for you too like how how quickly did like your kid's hair grow because like my child's hair is like she's like three months but she doesn't even have like like you can still see scalp well that's the, that's the, that goes to another thing i was going to say right so my two daughters they have very different hair textures from each other um with same mom same dad um let Lynn, she hair is thicker and it holds beautiful braids. And as you see, Lexi's not in braids because it's kind of pointless. Her hair is so soft, they're gonna come out, right? So it's so you have to have different hairstyles for each kid because they have different <laughs> types of hair. Um, so uh, so I think Lynn's hair grew slower than um, Lexi's. Um, Lexi's hair definitely grew uh, faster. I think she had a nice head of hair. Um, within a couple of months, uh, then kind of pause for a minute. Um, but, and then uh, Lex Lynn, when her, her, she had like the ball spatches too, but then once it was there, it was just there. You had a nice uh, fro going on there. Um, but let me see, let me think. Lexi, Lexi had mostly all her hair within, like said, within months. And then Lynn was a little slow on the back. That type of slow that kind of makes you a little nervous, like, all right, um, when is it all going to even out? <laughs> uh, but as you see, they both have these beautiful manes that their poor mother maintains. I'm glad they have each other because I'm able to skip out on the lessons you guys take because they can braid each other's hair now. So <laughs> so, so I, I, got through, I got through my phase. I got my three hairstyles, and they got it from here. All right, have, do you have Lexi Lynn or Luther, do you have advice for um, trying to get the little ones to stop crying while it's hair time? Just give them their like, um, boba. Boba, what? boba. Logan's almost three. I think it's too big for the bobo. Sometimes I would let him watch TV, but he'll still cry. Well, Lexi is 10 and she still cries when her gets done. Because it hurts. <laughs> I like, I like, they, I like when my sister's crying, like that it hurts. I would like do something funny, and then she'll laugh or just stop. So see, that works for you, Sergio. When you're doing Michelle's hair, you just have uh, Logan do something funny. Michelle's <laughs> too, too young to help out Logan on that, though. Right. <laughs> so if Logan's crying, somebody else can make Logan. Nice. Okay. And I, I, I mean, I get if he cries because of the braids, but I could just be detangling it and being so gentle and he'll just be like traumatized. I'm like, I'm just detangling it. Yeah, that's Lexi. <laughs> so before we wrap up, before we wrap up, Lexi and Lynn, do you guys have questions for the dads here on this chat today? Yes. yes. Okay. Now I want everyone to know first, I have not heard or seen their questions. At this very moment, I am second guessing this whole segment. <laughs> I have no idea what my daughter's gonna say. All right, so give us question number one. So first, the question is for Sergio. What's up? Mr. Sergio. Hey. Okay. Uh, the question is, what do you do? Um, what do you do with your kids during quarantine? 
What do I do with my kids during quarantine? Um, I had to upgrade. All right. Um, there are, well, I'm trying to teach Logan Spanish. So we have on the wall a bunch of flashcards with drawings and words in English and Spanish. So I would just be like, find banana, and he'll like go to it. Find pizza, and he'll go to it. Find casa. I'll say it in English or Spanish, and he'll like point at it. Sometimes he has a difficulty finding it, but yeah, I love the whole flashcards on the wall thing. Um, what else? We've gotten him some interesting toys. We got him some like letter mats that he can put on the floor. So he loves playing with those. Um, but honestly, I had to invest in a tablet as well. So we got him doing ABC mouse. Um, and then, yeah, it's, it's fun for him. He likes uh, coloring. And also him and mommy like to paint. So sometimes if mommy's in a mood, she'll put like paper on the floor and they'll go at it and painting. Um, there's certain songs that he likes. Like he hears a song and it's dance time. So I'll have like a small playlist for him. Um, sometimes, especially now that it's hot, like we'll just do a bath time just because he likes playing in the bath. And I was like, let's just go bath time, you know? So try to keep him active. There are some days where it's a gloomy, you know, everyone's tired, fatigued. We just like watch TV for half the day, but I try my best to keep, to keep making sure that he's like learning, even the TV he watches. Like there are some shows that ask you to interact, you know, and so he loves those. Like Mickey Mouse Clubhouse tells you to like say words with him and stuff like that. So, da, 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 Dora. <laughs> okay. That yeah. awkward long pause. Yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> so question for Brandon. Yes, Mr. Brandon. Um. Uh, have you ever thought about like not quitting, but needing to have a little break away from your kid or kids. Have I ever thought about what? Like taking a break from your kids or kid. Oh, have I ever thought about taking a break from my kid or kids? Um, no, because I already get breaks. Um, with my wife and I being able to kind of like either tag team or take turns. Um, I get breaks. Now my breaks aren't necessarily super restful because um, I have other stuff that I have to do. So like while I'm working, I technically have a break from my daughter um, or while I'm like, you know, doing stuff for like poetry things, I have a break from my daughter. Um, but honestly, my daughter is my break from the rest of the world. And it's a beautiful thing being able to like just hold her even when she's crying and fussy or hungry or whatever. Um, just getting to see her smiling face and play with her as she's trying to learn how to crawl already at three months um, and wanting to walk already at three months is just really awesome. So yeah, like my daughter's really my break from the world. Okay, the last one is for my dad, Mr. Daddy. Nice. Okay, say this one. How does wait, it, wait. Okay, one, two, three. How, how does, does it feel being a dad of girls? Oh, how does it feel being a dad of girls? Hashtag girl dad. Um, it is awesome and scary. Um, I'll talk to you guys because you guys are asking about you guys, but you guys, there is no one in the my entire life who has loved me as much as you guys do. Um, and that is that is a literal fact. Um, I mean, you you would like to say, you know, you would think, oh, what about your mom? Which if you could imagine the automatic love you can think of with your mom, I feel like the love I get from you guys is even greater. Um, and I, and that's that's awesome. I, 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 I literally feel taken care of and inspired uh, by you guys. It's scary. Because as you might have heard us talk about, the world you guys are growing up in is not as awesome as you guys are. Um, so my job is to make sure I protect you and prepare you for the times I cannot protect you. So that I know that you're protected by yourself or by each other. So it's, it's awesome and it's scary. Those are really great questions, girls. and I. Feel bad for being nervous about it. Thank so, you for asking your questions. Yeah, thank great you. job, ladies.
So, ladies, do you guys have any final um, thoughts before we go? Final what now? Sorry. Any final thoughts? Last thing you want to say quickly before we go? No, I really do. Sergio, Brandon? No, this was great. Thanks for having this. Um, yes, thank you so much for letting me come in, you know, do this and be a part of this. Um, you know, learning about fatherhood from other fathers is something that fathers should really do, you know. Um, and uh, I'm going to do the poetry thing and plug something. Yes, um, please, definitely. And Sergio, please do the same. Uh, July 7th, you guys can catch me on America's Got Talent. Yes. Nice. Nice. What are you be doing? Poetry. I'm the first poet to hit the show. Nice. I always thought about that. I, I, I'm going to have to watch that now. I was like, I wonder if they ever put poets on this show. Nice. Yeah, I definitely will watch. Uh, Sergio, you got anything to plug? Um, uh, I'm, I don't do much right now on my Instagram. Um, I do IGTV. I call it Talk Dirty Dishes. And it's just whenever it's my time to do dishes, I'll be talking about certain topics. Um, I have three episodes already. I did a religion, I did parenting, and the third episode that I'm uploading today is entrepreneurship. So I'm actually uh, self-employed and working with multiple organizations. So I'm gonna be uploading that. So it's like every three or four days anytime I gotta do dishes, um, I just pick a topic to discuss uh, while I'm live. Awesome. So, but yes, um, thank you both. Thank you all for being a part of this first one. I feel great about it. I feel inspired um, and I'm glad that I started to do this. I really hope um, that even after this, people get to watch this video because um, there were some really good gems there. And I hope that we um, both as individuals, as units, um, as this um, program continues, just inspire everyone um, in some sort of way. So thank you all. Um, don't log off, we'll do a chat um, amongst ourselves at the end, but I'm going to go ahead and close out uh, real quick for uh, Facebook. So that concludes season one, episode one of hashtag dad life dad chat. Um, thank you all for, for watching. If you got to this point and you watched to the end, please share the video. There was some really great things um, I think that was said. And I hope that this inspires dad chats uh, around the world, just to connect with other dads and just support each other. And definitely continuing to support our children. This is an amazing time. And when I say amazing, I mean, I'm amazed by how crazy and intense it is, but there's also some good things coming out of it. And this is in a way, one of them. I just like to close by saying what my, um, my general quote is in times like this. While we continue to fight for our black lives, let's continue to enjoy our black lives, our art, our culture, and our people, our dads, our mothers, and our children. Thank you for joining us for Hashtag Dad Life Dad Chat.